All right, everybody. Uh, we're going to be taking a look here today at our Chapter 6 practice test B. Um, so we'll try and get through as many problems as we can, hopefully, uh, about 10 minutes or so. So to decide where the figure is a polygon, you need to remember a few things for polygons, okay? All straight sides, and it needs to close. So if we look at number one, it closes completely, straight sides all the way around, that one's going to be yes. That's a polygon, okay? Two, however, you can see there's clearly an opening. It does not close all the way, which doesn't follow the parameters we need. So that's going to be a no. Three, all right, this is a polygon, all straight sides. It's closing off. Your figure's closed, so that's going to be a yes. Now, number four, we didn't talk a whole lot about this in class, but you'll notice that you have this extra ray here taking place, okay? Because of this fact, this would not, with that added on there, be a polygon. This is a no. If this was gone, that's fine. But because it's there, it, it makes it not a polygon. <coughs> Excuse me. So, convex or concave. Um, if you extend all of your sides out, okay, meaning like just extend lines out, if any of them go inward, it's concave. Hence concave, like you're going into the cave. So, number five is concave. But if you look at number six, if I extend all these sides out, none of them are going inward. That's what we call a convex polygon. Okay? Number seven, following those parameters, convex. <clears throat> and number eight, you'll notice that there's a little indent going in. So because cutting inward, that's concave. Right? If it helps, go ahead and draw the lines out so you can see it visually. Otherwise, if you just see any indentations going in, always concave. If there's none, convex. Okay, number 9 through 12, decide whether the statement is always, sometimes, or never true. A rhombus is a square. Okay, this will be sometimes, all right? So we look at our little family tree that we have on the backboard of our classroom. Um, a rhombus is right above a square on our little family tree. So occasionally a rhombus can be a square. Now vice versa, a square is always a rhombus, but when it's going this way, it's always just sometimes. Number 10, a rectangle is a parallelogram. A rectangle has all the properties of a parallelogram. Okay, opposite sides parallel um, and congruent. Opposite angles congruent. Adjacent angles up to 180. Therefore, this is always. A trap is always a parallelogram. These are two separate branches off a of quadrilateral. This one will be never. Okay, um, parallelogram needs both pairs of opposite sides parallel. Trapezoid only needs one. Finally, a parallelogram is a rectangle. This is another one of those sometimes. It can be, just not all the time. All right. <clears throat> okay, making our way down. Um, number 13. This resembles a rectangle. Okay, four right angles. And what we got here is opposite sides have to be congruent. So x minus 15 equals one half x. Now, I know fractions are scary, but to get rid of it, do the opposite. Multiply everything by 2. Um, 2x minus 30 equals x. The 2 times a half cancels out. Subtract x over. Add 30 over. x equals 30. Okay. The initial setup is a difficulty there. <coughs> Pardon me. Number 14. All of these angles. Okay. Inside of a quadrilateral, half to have 360. So 40 plus 5x plus 3x plus 72 equals 360. Combine like terms. 40 and 70 gives you 112. 5x and 3x is 8x. Okay. Um, subtract 112 from 360. 248. Divide both sides by 8. Sorry, I'm writing all over the place. We get 31. Okay. So again, look to make sure that all of your angles add up to 180. Number 15. All right. The signs here actually give it away what you're looking for. These both sides are congruent. These two sides are congruent. So use this. Okay. Um, 3x minus 17 equals 22. Add 17 over. So 39, 49, okay. oh, sorry, 39, divide both sides by 3, x equals 13. Uh, as far as this x goes, it's just saying that this side length right here is 13, while these two are 22 in length. So it's almost like a red herring, if you will, like you don't need it to solve the problem. Um, much the same for the next problem, if we take a look at it. There's a lot of information here, okay, and you have the option to do 
two different things. You could, if you'd like, set opposite angles equal. So you could say 2 thirds x plus 8 equals x minus 5. However, I'm going to take a little different path just because I'm trying to avoid the fractions, make my life a little easier. Um, adjacent angles in a quadrilateral, or sorry, a parallelogram must be supplementary, which means they add to 180. So I'm going to say 3x plus 29 plus x minus 5 equals 180. Okay. Would you be correct if you set these equal? Absolutely. Um, it's just a little extra step, that's all. 3x and x is 4x. 29 minus 5 is 24. Subtract that over. 156. Divide by 4. x equals 39. Alright? Good. Um, if you really want to double check, you can plug these back in. Make sure it works out and everything will just be fine. Okay, and bottom page here. Um, decide if you are given enough information to prove that a quadrilateral allows parallelogram. One pair of opposite sides are congruent. That's going to be a no. Okay, you, you're going to need both pairs of opposite sides congruent, as, as well as one pair of parallel sides. Um, 18, two pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Okay, this will work. So we've got what we need there. Okay, that's enough to prove a parallelogram. All pairs of consecutive angles are congruent. Um, this would give us basically the only way it could possibly work for a quadrilateral would be a rectangle or a square, which is a part of the parallelogram family, so that'll be a yes. And lastly, diagonals are perpendicular. Um, this one's going to be a no only because um, we learned one other shape in class that has this, which is a kite. Okay, a kite's got a perpendicular diagonals, so it could possibly be a kite as opposed to a parallelogram. All righty. <coughs> Pardon me again. Okay, jumping to the back. What type of special quadrilateral is shown? One pair of opposite sides parallel. Trapezoid. Okay. Both pairs of opposite sides parallel. There's your parallelogram. And you can clearly see a difference between those two, which is a, a very important distinction to make. Um, all sides congruent. Now, you'd be inclined to maybe say a square here, but I don't have all four angles the same, so this is just going to be a rhombus. Good. Okay, equal angular, equilateral, regular, or none. Okay, equal angular is all angles the same, all sides the same, both, none. So here we can see all five sides the same, all five angles the same. There's your regular. All they give us here are the angles. Even though the sides look congruent with the information provided, that's all we got. So that's equal angular. Um, this one's going to be none. Uh, one pair is of sides congruent, the other one's congruent, but not all of them are the same. So this is going to be a none. And lastly, although it looks like the angles are the same, these are two dash, this is one, but all the sides are the same, there's your equilateral. Okay? All right. Looking good so far. Almost done. Number 28. All right. We are looking at an area formula here. Okay, so... Um, what I'm looking at doing is, it's a rectangle. I'm going to say, base times height, which is 7 times 3.5. Right. Don't ever hesitate to bust out a calculator. And I'm getting 24.5. Okay. Um, 24.5 centimeters squared. Jot that up here. Good. Um, area of a trapezoid, 1 half height times B1 plus B2. Please again note that all the formulas will be provided for you on the backboard. Okay, So one half, my, air, my height is 8. My bases are 10 and 6. Add them together, 16. Now a little trick for you guys, mental math. Half of 16 is 8. 8 and 8 is 64 inches squared. Um, I would rather take half of the 16 as opposed to 8 because it makes it smaller numbers to work with. Just a, you know, my own little personal preference thing. So 64 inches squared. Good. Um, 30. This is a parallelogram. Base times height. There's some information here you do not need. You need the height, which is 7. You need the base, which is 12. Okay. The base is what's perpendicular to it. So we're looking at 12 times 7, which gives me 84 meters squared. Okay. And lastly, um, a kite one half d1 times d2. Your d1 is this length going across, okay, with a whole length, which is five. Go 
going this way is 10. All right. Note that the 4 and the 8, not necessary. We don't need it for this problem. Um, half of 10 is 5. 5 and 5 is 25 feet squared. Okay. All right. As far as the drawing of figures go, just quickly we'll take a look at this. Uh, equilateral, quadrilateral, all four sides the same. I'm never going to judge you on your artistic ability, but just four sides the same. Equilangular pentagon. Just draw a pentagon the best you can. I know this one's not equilangular, but what I could do here to show that is just put one dashes. Okay. Um, again, my, my picture's definitely off because these are 90 degrees, a little bit higher, but as long as you're noting it right, you're okay. A regular quadrilateral, the only one we got there is all four sides the same, all four angles the same, square. And a concave hexagon. Uh, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Six sides, and it's going inward. So there's your concave hexagon. Hope this video helped. Um, good luck studying for your tests, and we're all counting on you.